Hello and welcome to the Daily Millwall for Thursday the 22nd of April 2021. Today in Millwall news, Benny Mitchell signs a new contract. Uh, this is from millwallfc.co.uk and it says Mill Football Club is delighted to announce that Billy Mitchell has put pen to paper on a long-term contract at the Den. The 20-year-old, a Mill fan from Berber, has made 23 appearances for the Lions since his debut at Wigan Athletic on the final day of the 18-19 season and will now be a part of the club's plans for the foreseeable future. After his showing from the bench at the DW Stadium, Mitchell went on to make appearances in the Carabao Cup at Oxford United and the Emirates FA Cup against Newport County in the 16 before playing seven further Skybet Championship games under Rowett in 1920, in which he was named as the Lions Young Player of the Year. The 2021 campaign has seen the midfielder go from strength to strength after returning from injury, playing 12 times today in the heart of Mills' injury room. So there you go, he's uh, signed a new deal. Um, and we can see from here, um, this is from londonnewsonline.co.uk, which is the South London Press's online website. And it says midfielder's new meal deal is a reward for proving he is first team ready. Gary Rowe says Billy Mitchell's new contract is a reward for his progression to an established first team squad member. The Lions confirmed yesterday that the 20 year old midfielder, a boyhood fan of the SC16 club, has signed a long term deal. Rowett said, told the South London Press, sometimes you have to re reward young players when they have done well. Billy was on an under-23 development contract, essentially, and he has proved he is now part of the first team and a first team player. Of course, he has still got a long way to go with his own development, and what he needs to do is important. Um, the contract lets you have opportunities to grow and develop and be rewarded for that. He's a young player, and we want him tied down for a decent amount of time. If he does develop, then we have got a very good player on our hands. Along with Danny McMara early in the season, that's another uh, young lad that we have looked at for a longer term as well. Um, so there you go, they signed him up to a new contract. Um, and I, I don't think, was his contract going to run out this season? I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it was. Um, but they've signed him up. Um, so there you go. Um, and that probably cuts into our budget or it probably means decisions have been made about players uh, being let go like um, Shane Ferguson and um, Alex Pierce and Matt Smith maybe so they know their money's going to be there and they're going to let people go so they're using the money already on, in ways that they can um, in terms of uh, re-signing and rewarding uh, young players coming through. Um, so there you go. Moving on now, this is from millfc.co.uk as well. It's about the Watford game um, next this Saturday coming up. It says, Watford trip selected for overseas broadcast. If you are an overseas Millwall fan watching this on YouTube, Please be aware that you will not be able to watch the game on iFollow because it has been selected for overseas broadcast. So it says Millwall Skybet Championship trip to Watford on Saturday the 24th of April, kickoff 3pm British Standard Time, has been selected for overseas broadcast. As a result, iFollow match passes will be unavailable to international subscribers. They will, however, still be available to purchase for UK-based subscribers. So there you go. Um, if once again, uh, if you are living abroad as an I follow Mill fan, then you are being punished and won't be allowed to pay your money to watch the game. You'll have to find out which broadcaster is showing it in your country and then presumably pay them for it, which is a uh, I don't know. doesn't make any sense to me. But there you go. Uh, so that's the random news out of the way. We're going to move on now to stats of video because today is the day after the match. All the stats are in. Let's have a little post mortem of that mauling, 4 1 mauling yesterday. So here we go. This is from Experiment of 361. I'm going to keep uh, the stats, on, stats um, section brief because it's quite clear and quite obvious that we were outclassed. I don't think there's anything. Um, really that you can uh, get 
get insights you can gain from the stats in a match and so here you can see not a lot of uh, chances uh, only two chances in the first half by Millwall the blue line is Millwall, the red line is uh, Bournemouth as the line goes up that's the chance being taken the higher it goes up the quality of the chance is a very good one and we can see here um, Mills quite flat for quite a lot of the time because they're having to defend and they didn't really do that in the first half so we didn't have a shot so we had a shot in about the 10th minute it looks like not a very good one and then we didn't have another shot until the 46th minute and in that time Bournemouth has scored three times so there you go we made the change at um, half time went to back to 442 and it did make a bit of a difference um, Bournemouth's quality of chances is probably not as good a um, bit few and far between spread out over the the length of the, the rest of the game I think it picked up a bit when the subs come on you can see from about 66 minutes on it they scored and then it did pick up a bit and um, Millwall um, flatline again they had a really good chance I think that was Billy Mitchell getting cleared off the line that big jump in blue and then flatline again until the the end of the game so we didn't have a, a chance on goal from about 70th minute till the end of the game we were just totally outclassed um, moving on now this is infogoal.net and you can see the um, the actions of the game the three goals in the first half Mills goal straight after half time and then the the other goal from uh, Bournemouth cards for Mill three cards for Mill one for them bidding um yeah totally outclassed um let's have a look at the stats in numbers terms so yeah possession we we always give away possession we don't we don't like playing with the ball um. 37 to 63 attempts on target one to seven so the, the so basically the one attempt on target we had was a, got scored so there you go uh, attempts off target two to six block shots four to one goalkeeper saves three to zero total passes three four six to six three two uh, completed passes two four five two five three two uh, we actually had more corners three to one and um, that's because they were basically playing through the middle um basically not going down the wings at all uh bournemouth um offsides four to one uh fouls 10 to 11 but red cards so the fouls pretty even but we had more yellow cards three to one um yeah there you go uh let's go now to the lineups what were the ratings um just worried looking at this how bad is it gonna be um so they give the lowest rank into pierce it would seem 5.14 uh, a lot of fives there uh we've got wallace the only parents with seven 7.06 to 6.37 billy mitchell 6.85 cooper 6.14 beer kelsey 6.16 let's have a look at the subs they're in the fives as well Connor mahoney 5.98 he came on for Alex Pierce, so he got a better rating than uh, he got a better rating than the player he re re um, replaced. So there you go. Um, let's have a look at the so the expected goals here are in the middle by the red FT. They give it as one point two four to me all two point two nine to Bournemouth to Bournemouth out um, doing their expected goals. Getting getting the getting goals from the quality of their chances, um, more goals than they should really realistically score. So it's one point two four to two point two nine. So let's go back and see. So here it's zero point nine to two point seven. Similar, quite similar, but um, a bit higher. Let's have a look at the shot map. Where were the expected goals taken on the pitch? Mill had some pretty decent chances there. This one here. Billy Mitchell, 69 minutes. That was the one I think that was the one that cleared off the line. Um, the other one, that was Billy Mitchell, 69 minutes as well. So that was the, yeah, that, 
That was definitely the one cleared off the line. Um, the scram, gold mouth scramble. Um, the one here, Jed Wallace, 49 minutes. I think that was, that was the goal. Yeah, it's ringed in yellow. That was the goal. So there you go. But oof, look at Bournemouth. These, the three, the four yellow ones are the goal. And that one there was just the one that Solanke skied over. So that that should have been a goal as well. I can't believe. You can see why he didn't really make it at a top, top, top level. Even though. It was a promising youngster in the England under 21 set up and that kind of um, situation, but it's kind of uh, faded away slightly for him. But these these are the goals here. Dan Juma, that was a 21% chance. Um, this one's Solanke 40. This one, uh, Billing 36. And this one here, uh, Brooks 11. And those were the goals. Um, so, fairness rating, yep. Yeah, 80% fair game, fair result. That's probably because it's probably, I would say, probably one goal too many. Maybe we could have done be better with one of the goals, and that's probably why it's not as high as on the fairness rating. Let's look at the first half. So you can see in the first half, not a lot going on for Millwall. Two long range shots. Um, one from Jed Wallace in injury time. One was with Sahor in the, on the eleventh minute. Pitiful from Mill, and you can see there Bournemouth playing it around and getting getting into the box. Not really um, wasting the shots from distance, getting into the box, getting shots, and having three goals by half time. So then when we go in the second half, we can see Mill stepped it up a bit. Um, got some decent chances. As, in goal, um, but then Bournemouth pretty much matched us. They did, they weren't as prolific as they were in the, in the first half, but they matched us. So there you go. There's that. Moving on from that, like I said, not going to stick around because we were just totally outclassed. Um, Millwall's strengths were effective at creating goal-scoring opportunities from the flanks. Weaknesses were aggressive, lost possession often, were caught offside often, committed a high number of individual errors. Styles had a large quantity of possession in the opponent's half, favoured long shots, attacked down the right hand side. For Bournemouth, created a high number of chances, were effective goal creating goal scoring opportunities from long balls, from uh, from through balls, from long shots, and from counter attacks, were strong at finishing. But it says they committed a high number of individuals' error, errors as well. They attacked down the left side and tapped through the middle, dominated possession, favoured short passing, and favoured through balls. Yes, they were a passing team, but unlike a lot of teams where they pass between the centre backs at the back in their home half third, doing very little with the ball, just keeping it for keeping its sake. They actually moved forward into the middle of the park or even into Mills half and then played it sideways in front of our um, defence looking to open us up and play a ball through so there was that so here we can see uh, chances from open play um, attempts 7 to 14 uh, chances from open play 4 to 10 set pieces 3 to 2 counter attack 0 to 2 um, we had 7 shots 1 goal that's 14 percent they were twice as good as us they had 14 shots 4 goals that's 28 percent conversion rate there you go um, both teams go. Oh, we're going down the right. They're going down the left. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so moving on now to the um, the graphic stats. So if you look at the top by the badges, you can see the average Millwall player rating five point nine one. The average Bournemouth uh, player rating seven point oh four. A massive difference. That is a massive difference. This is. One of the highest differences I've seen ever on this on this um, place. Um, a whole um, ten percent better per player. Um, yeah, pretty um, stark there. Pretty stark. Um, so if you look on the left hand side, that's Millwall. It's a bit jarring because Millwall in red, Bournemouth in blue, which is obviously as it were, how they were um, lined up in the kits, but. That's the way this website does it. The home team is always on the left and in red. Um, you can see here E. That's error that led to a goal. Um, and George Evans got that on him. 
and that gave him the lowest rating on according to whosquad.com which is the website you're looking at now he got 4.6 last couple of games he's had some real stinkers um he started when he first came here he started in defense because we had um players injured missing and then we moved into midfield he wasn't really doing all that and then they moved him back in defense and it wasn't he, he was just awful today um they until they switched to back four and then it kind of got better but damn what's happening son what's happening georgie um yeah so best player they give to wallace um but everyone else is pretty um pretty poor to average and all all of the subs got higher ratings i think than the players they replaced um um, Mahoney 6.3 replaced Pierce um, Zahor 5.9 Bradshaw 6 Williams 6.1 replaced him Woods the same there um, yeah there you go um, yeah what can you say we just outclassed um, so they gave man and match the bidding the, the lanky kid with the throw um, yeah, so let's let's just quickly run through this. Like I said, I'm not going to stick around. Just total shots. They had double double the you know, the shots we had. Their entire front line had we're just shooting for fun. We had uh, two from Zahor, two from Wallace, two from Mitchell, one from Mahoney. Possession wise, in terms of match percentage, um, even Ryan Woods is normally spends a lot of time in the ball. Not not today, mate. Not today. And like I said. Um, these teams now, the the ones that do us really badly, they've sussed that if they get in bet between the defenders and Woods when he drops down, which is what Billings was doing, I think, um, and the other players as well, that you really dis disrupt our game. You can, you we can't do anything then. But Pierce only one point one. So boy, he came off at half time, so that doesn't really say anything. Like I said, um, that doesn't really um, tell you anything, can it? Uh, Billy Mitchell, four point seven percent of the match possession, which is just it's the uh, highest for Millwall. But you look at over to the Bournemouth team, and it's, it's nothing really. And um, pass success. So Mitchell uh, Pierce just just awful. Fifty five percent in forty five minutes on the pitch. Uh, Woods eighty three. Wallace eighty nine, that's a lot better from him. Uh, Malone eighty three. Kefton Bell only seventy. Birkowski low, low, low thirteen. That's because the hawk wasn't really jumping, I don't know. Maybe he's maybe he is injured and he's struggling on. Um, I gave a little comment yesterday, like uh, there maybe there's some kind of uh, he was kicking off about being subbed off, and that's why he said, "Oh, I don't want to play for the rest of the season or something." Something's happened there, but maybe he was injured and just didn't jump properly. I don't know. But there you go. Uh, moving on to dribbles. Yeah, there you go. Aerials one. So we got done for aerials again. Yeah, the lad, the tall lad. Billing won four, but you look at Woods winning two, Mitchell winning three, Cooper winning three, Zahor two, Wallace one. So normally when you're playing someone up front, if they were the tall guy, which is, even though Zahor's not actually tall, tall, but he's he's a striker who can, who's half shoot half decent in the air normally, only winning two two balls. That that's what's uh, leading to the pass accuracy being. Uh, not too good for everyone else, it would seem. So tackles wise, so you've got a whole trench down the middle of Pierce Cooper, Mitchell Woods, and Zahor not having a single tackle. Hey, Billing winning six tackles there. Um, yeah, there, a lot of players were struggling with him. Um, so corners, yeah, we know we took the corners. There you go. It's dispossessed. Who got dispossessed on the ball? Um, pretty much of a muchness between both teams really uh, there you go um, moving on now to the player stats in a list form 
pretty much what we've just seen but easier to read um so in terms of who was the best player of the mill jed wallace yeah 7.33 and then a whole 10 percent a whole one point lower was a ranking out of 10 so that's 10 percent below jed wallace was conor mahoney who came on at half time so that tells you how bad things were when a player who had 45 minutes was the second best player of the night for me wall and let's so he's the second best player at 6.27 let's have a look how that would compare to the Bournemouth players so how far do we go have to go down to the Bournemouth players to get 6.26 so the substitute basically or there are 11 players Am I reading that right? Yeah, there are 11 players on the Bournemouth team that got a better rating than the second rated uh, Mill player of the night who was a substitute who only played 45 minutes. So there you go, totally outclassed, totally outclassed everyone. Totally outclassed. So shots, so we we had shots, shots on target. So Billy Mitchell 2-2, two two. Jed Wallace 2-1, two but Zahor 2-0. <sighs> is it worth playing him? I mean, can we not play Bradshaw? Can we not play play with Varson? I mean, is it worth it? Is it worth playing him? It seems like he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to play. Doesn't want to put the effort in. Don't play him. Play Burry up front. Play Mason Bennett up front. Do something. Put Cooper up front. At least then, if you play long ball, it'll work out. Ah, <sighs> so touches on the ball. Billy Mitchell, sixty. He was uh, in the first half. He was. He wasn't he, the slickest. He was taking extra touches, which kind of slowed us down. Uh, I think he was um, being surrounded a lot. Billing and the and the other guys in uh, Bournemouth's team were getting on him, and he was taking extra touches, three or four touches before laying it off. So. There you go. Um, okay, so there you, you can see it there. You can see it there. So who won the aerial? Aerials won. Billy Mitchell free. Cooper free. There you go. Um, okay, so let's move on to this one. Offensive. Uh, we've seen most of these already. Let's look at unscheduled touches. It's basically poor ball control. Pretty much. So eight players there for me all having at least one. Billy Mitchell and Jed Wallace were free. They were the ones doing the most, trying the most. You see when Jed Jed tries hard hard to make things happen, they don't always work out. But it is what it is, isn't it? Um, so defensive wise, um, most tackles gift gift the build four. So the defenders not really getting any tackles in. That's why Bournemouth was shooting for fun, because Kefton Bird was in the middle um, tackling, but the defenders weren't really getting involved. So Alex Pierce not having a tackle, Jake Cooper not having a tackle. What's happening, bruv? What's happening? Because they were basically getting done and having to run back and just try and do something. Interceptions. So McMara Woods. So. And Wallace, you've again, you've got the midfielders doing defensive work here. Normally, normally, if Murray Wallace was playing, he would be, to be one. Oh, you, you, you've seen him in the last game. His stats are at the top uh, in terms of these defensive uh, stats: tackles, interceptions, clearances, block shots. A player like Murray Wallace playing would be at the top. A player like Sean Hutchinson would be at the top. You won't have no midfielders being at the top of these. These ratings here. So you've got Ryan Woods with two interceptions. You've got Jay Cooper not without without making a tackle all game. Here. Got one interception, but five clearances. So you've got five clearances. McNamara Malone, three and three. Even Biakowski getting two. <sighs> um block shots. Only one block shot. We weren't really blocking the shots because the shots were coming in quick and fast. Didn't really, couldn't really um, get back in time to block them. 
But there you go. So fouls, we gave away a lot of fouls. We've got seven players giving away fouls. And there they are. Um, passing wise. So who had the most passes for Millwall? It was Billy Mitchell, 46, yeah. George Evans, 39. Um, Jed Wallace, 35. Joe Cooper, 33. McMurra and Woods. So Woods way down there. He did, well, he did come off in 77 minutes, so... But yeah, I think a lot of teams have sussed the way that we play. Either if you put you put play uh, you stack the players in at the between the defence and the the midfield, you put them bunching up the strikers and the attacking midfielder, you you you're gonna have success, success against Millwall. Um, crosses and accurate crosses. So we have got Jed Wallace five and one. I think this in, this includes corners. So that's why. Wallace and Malone are always at the top, but look again with Malone, four and zero. He's for every really, really, really good game he has, he has these dog shit games. Four and zero, uh, Mahoney three and one, George Evans two and zero. And then you got all these players with crosses, and then they were inaccurate. Mitchell Woods, Zahore, Burry, Bradshaw. There you go. Doing the same for long balls, yeah. Oh, jeez, look at this. This is even worse. The, and the, like I said, this this before with the map, this lead was because Zahor playing the target man, and he wasn't really jumping. But I don't know if he's if he's injured or or what's happening. So they said he was out for the rest of the season, and then suddenly, miraculously, he, we see him in the starting lineup, and we're all shocked. So like, the hell's going on? So long ball, twenty two and two. But Bart Bierkowski, uh, accuracy. A 29 for George Evans. Uh, Billy Mitchell, 6 and 2. J Jake Cooper, 6 and 2. Alex Pierce, 4 and 0. Ay, Jed Wallace, 3 and 3. McNamara, 3 and 0. Malone, 2 and 1. Woods, 2 and 2. Yep. Yeah, just. We were outclassed. We were outclassed all over the pitch. And it was it wasn't a good pretty sight to see. I think Bournemouth are, are a Premier League team. I think they're gonna win the playoffs. Um if you're betting man, go get down in the bookies now and put your money on them to win. Um to win the playoffs, I think uh, or to get promoted to the Premier League because then you I don't know if they can still get second uh, we're playing Watford on the Saturday who are in second, so we'll see how that goes, but that's the difference in class. Bournemouth, Premier League team, effectively, uh, and then against Millwall. And in a 4 1 defeat, totally outclassed. A whole 10% per player rating, outclassed. Um, and that's just that's the video for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.